Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats, shall we? Thanks, guys. As Andy mentioned, we're going to come back to you know, an extended time of singing and praying and ministering to one another in, in a few minutes' time. Um, I'm Martin. My name's Martin. I'm one of the elders of the church here. I'm also a Liverpool fan who was at the Annex yesterday. And I was about as close to cl- where Clive's sitting, and I'm as close to where Colin is sitting right there from the North Stand yesterday where I was sitting at the Amex. And um, I said to my son when we got home, did you, did you hear the songs that the North Stand was singing? He said, no. It's like, that's good. Um, <laughs> so the songs here this morning are so much nicer to be a part of than the songs from the North Stand yesterday. And actually, every time we sing Holy, Holy, it's Lord God Almighty, and, uh, and we sing for 10 minutes through that song, it always reminds me of Revelation, where the living creatures around the throne, day and night, forever, they sing Holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And every time we get to kind of those songs here, I, I, I always think it's so good that our present is singing holy is the Lord and our future and our eternity is singing holy is the Lord and there will be a day where there will no more be songs from the North Stand at the Amex, Colin. (laughs) Right, Uh, we're into Acts chapter 21 today, back into Acts, but I'm really using Acts chapter 21 as a launch pad uh, or as a preface to getting into 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So we're really... At 11 o'clock when we get the kids back in, we're going to be just asking the Holy Spirit to do whatever he wants to do, to gift people with spiritual gifts and for us as the church to use the gifts that the Holy Spirit gifts. So it may be that at 10.59, the Holy Spirit hasn't yet given you a spiritual gift. It may be by 11 o'clock he has and by 11.01 you're using that gift. That's, that's how good God is. So. I'm going to start just by reading Acts, uh, the first 16 verses of Acts chapter 21. It says this from the ESV. And when we had parted from them and set sail, we came by a straight course to Cos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patara. And having found a ship crossing to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had come in sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left, we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was to unload its cargo. And having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days. And through the Spirit, they were telling Paul not to go to Jerusalem. When our days there were ended, we departed and went on our journey. And they all, with wives and children, accompanied us until we were outside the city. And kneeling down on the beach, we prayed and said farewell to one another. Then we went on board the ship and they returned home. When we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Ptolemais. And we greeted the brothers and stayed with them for one day. On the next day we departed and came to Caesarea and we entered the house of Philip the Evangelist who was one of the seven and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And this is the bit that we're going to use to kind of launch into 1 Corinthians. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and says, Thus says the Holy Spirit, this is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we ceased and said, let the will of the Lord be done. After these days, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem, and some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us, bringing us to the house of Nason of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we should lodge. Now, just to kind of preface the Holy Spirit, you know, speaking to us and moving through us today. In the Old Testament, and if you could start start with the slides now, um, as I go, Caleb, thanks. In the Old Testament, as you heard Clive speak last week, God spoke audibly to some people in the Old Testament. So last week when Clive was speaking from Genesis, we had God speaking to Abraham and Abraham speaking to God and there's a conversation happening between Abraham and God. And God spoke to Moses in the Old Testament and God spoke to Samuel in the Old Testament when Samuel was about 12 years old. 
is when God called Samuel. So, you know, the kids that are in here, the youth that are in here now, we've got 12-year-olds in here now. And then we see in the Old Testament that God called Samuel in the Old Testament when he was the same age as Saul Johnson is now, which is amazing. Um, and we get to New Testament. The Holy Spirit speaks to all of us. The Holy Spirit speaks to all believers. You and I have God indwelling, the Holy Spirit indwelling in us, speaking to us and teaching us and speaking through us, which is an incredible 21st century or New Testament church and on into the 21st century fact of our lives. It's amazing. And when God speaks to us, and in my experiences, when God speaks to us, typically we do one of three things and probably, we probably most of us have done all three of these things. Either we listen and do what he says. So Ananias, there's three Ananiases in, in Acts and the middle of the Ananiases. So the one that didn't get killed earlier, this one. Um, in Acts chapter nine, Ananias, God speaks to Ananias and says, Ananias, go to the road that is called straight, the street that is called straight, go and find Saul of Tarsus and basically bring him to repentance. Basically show him the error of his ways and show him, as God says to Ananias, I'm gonna show Paul how much he needs to suffer on behalf of my name. I'm gonna call him to be mine. And at this point, or that point, Saul of Tarsus had been trying to destroy the church and had overseen the stoning to death of Stephen. Not a pleasant person, right? Far less pleasant than the North Stand at the Amex yesterday, by a long way. And so when God spoke to Ananias, I said, Ananias, go to the street that is called Straight, thanks Andy. Um, go and basically tell Saul about me and that he needs to repent. At which point, rationally, Ananias could have said, but isn't he going to kill me when I get there? Isn't he responsible for basically trying to destroy the church? Yeah, that was true. And actually Ananias, or you know, it's not referenced in here really whether Ananias had a struggle or not, but Ananias said, okay, God's spoken to me. Off I go to the street called Straight. Saul, so, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. So either we do that when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, or we listen and we hear what he says and we listen to him and we don't do what he says. Like in Jonah chapter one, where in Jonah chapter one, God says to Jonah, Jonah, get up and go to Nineveh. And then it says, but Jonah got up and went to Tarshish because that is far less stressful than going to Nineveh and preaching to the people that I don't really want to see saved anyway. They're horrible, they're murderers. I'd much rather go over here. At which point, God pretty much, you know, the implication is God says, well, we'll do it the hard way then, Jonah. If that's what you'd rather, we will do it and we will do it the hard way. And actually, um, we were praying through there at nine o'clock and there was a couple of people that had, were Andy and Terry, had, had pictures of clay being molded. As, as it says, you know, we are, we are all molded by the potter, by God, we're all clay to be molded by God. And um, kind of struck me hearing the, the words and the prophetic pictures through there this morning, praying and, and thinking about these two first examples that we really need to be remaining as people willing to be molded and shaped by God. Because if we're molded, if we're willing to be molded and shaped and staying pliable and staying to where God can just shape us into the vessel that he wants to shape us into, for our own benefit, that's much less stressful than God having to knock bits off us more painfully. And I'm speaking entirely from experience, entirely. And Andy and I had a chat on Tuesday where just in the corridor upstairs, we were both saying, oh, I'm finding this thing difficult, Andy, and I'm having to let it go and let God do it. And he said, oh yeah, I'm actually finding this thing the same. And you kind of go, I've got to just stay as a pliable bit of clay that God can shape without him having to, like he did with Jonah, say, let's do it the hard way then. We're going to do it. So let's, let's be people that are always pliable, willing to be pliable 
and shaped by God. Third thing, or the third way in my experience is we can react when the Holy Spirit speaks is we hear him, but we don't listen. So we hear the words and then we just don't listen to them. And that kind of happens here in this bit of Acts chapter 21 where these Christians, these disciples are saying, okay, the Holy Spirit's saying, if you go to Jerusalem, you're gonna get arrested. Don't go there then. Don't go to Jerusalem because that obviously, you know, obviously don't do that. And it kind of even implies early on that through the Spirit, they were telling Paul not to go. And then Agabus prophesies through the Spirit. This is gonna happen to you when you go. And obviously Paul is the one saying, look, yeah, when I, when I go, I'm gonna get into trouble. Don't tell me not to go. Because actually, I've had enough experience already that God said, Paul, you're gonna suffer on behalf of my name and I'm ready to die if that's the case. Because that's much more important than not being pliable and not listening. And in my, in my life, I know I've done all three of those things and I'm really trying to be someone who listens and does what God says because I've had times where I've listened and not done what he says and he's had to just shape me anyway and it's not recommended. I wouldn't recommend it. And I've had times where I've, I've heard God and then not really listened and then gone, ah, no, I got that a bit wrong and I need to just listen. Now I'm going to link it to 1 Corinthians 12 from here, okay? Because really what I want to do is land in 15 minutes time and, and really for us all to just be open to God gifting us, gifting, giving spiritual gifts to us so that we can use them. So I'm going to link that passage of Acts 21 and that um, event there with Agabus prophesying to Paul to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And let me preface this by saying spiritual gifts are available to everybody who is a believer. Absolutely everybody. Spiritual gifts are available to all of us. If you're a Christian, then today the Holy Spirit is able to gift you. That's it, right? There's no kind of hierarchy of Christians. It's if you're a believer, then the Holy Spirit is indwelling in you and the Holy Spirit is able, as he wills, to give spiritual gifts to each and any of us for the common good, which we'll see in a minute. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Oops, let me just find it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from um, verses 4 to 11. And we're going to do this in 15 minutes time. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. Which are exciting verses, aren't they? I think. Now, the Spirit's main purpose in the world, and actually Sophie, Sophie said this right at the beginning and then Andy backed up what Sophie had said. The Holy Spirit's purpose in this world is to glorify Jesus and make his lordship real in our lives. Make the lordship of God real in our lives. Whilst not diminishing the fact that the Holy Spirit is God. So yes, the Holy Spirit is called one of his names. You know, it's the helper, yes. And his main purpose in the world is to glorify Jesus, yes. And the Holy Spirit is God as well. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the varieties of gifts that Paul writes here in 1 Corinthians about, the varieties of these gifts should bring unity to the church. They should help unite us. So where it said these manifestations of the Spirit in verse 7 are for the common good. Fantastic. There's 
hundreds of us here now. And actually, however the Holy Spirit chooses to gift and use us, the manifestations of that one, you know, the same Spirit empowering all, gifting as he decides and as he wills, is for the common good of us so that we can glorify Jesus, which is amazing. And the gifts that he gives aren't so that, you know, Lynn Thorpe, you brought home an amazing prophecy, aren't you amazing? The gifts are that prophetic word that the Holy Spirit gave Lynn to bring, it glorified God. Isn't God amazing? Hasn't it built the church by God gifting someone and God revealing his purposes and his will and his heart and his character? And isn't he amazing that he chose Lynn Thorpe to do that? Yes. Did Lynn do anything? No. She was just obedient to the gift that God gave. And I just want to... I, I, I had a different title for this talk, but I kind of rephrased it a couple of days ago. And I called it, In Your Thinking Be Mature, which is um, a line from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And um, I've been an elder here for exactly a year now, a year this week, just gone. 371 days and counting. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 I wasn't, no, I wasn't, no, that, that, thank you, but I wasn't aiming for that. It was more 371 days, is that all it's been so far? <laughs> okay, I said that, actually I won't tell you what I said to my wife and what she said, fine. Um, one of the, one of my favourite things actually that's happened this year to me is there's so many people in this church that are far wiser than I am, they just are. There's people that have got wisdom beyond my years. There's people here who have, who have done the role that I've started to do now, and they've been doing it, and they did it for 30 years. And there's, there's been amazing people that have got alongside me this year and really encouraged me and, and provoked and challenged where they needed to as well. And w- one of the things that's, that's happened a few times, actually, which I've really um, valued, is a few times people have said to me, you're holding back a bit when you preach, aren't you? And I said, what, what do you mean? And I said, well, you're almost saying things, but then you're thinking that might challenge people, so I'm not going to say it. And I said, yeah, I have done that a couple of times. And they said, but look, you're one of the elders of the church. You've got to stop doing that. You've got to, you've got to lead. I'm like, okay. Um, so I think, and, and for me, that's kind of the Ephesians 5 thing of submit yourself to one another to where I've been challenged by people to submit to their challenge because actually the thing they're saying to me is, look, I want to submit to you as an elder, lead me stronger. I'm like, okay, okay, well, I'll take that challenge on and I'll, and I'll run with it. So, sorry? Thank you. Thanks, Aggie. <laughs> Which has been a really, you know, a challenge where people are far more... The only word I can think of is old than me, but even older than me, far more mature. That's, I, yeah, I should have. Okay, far more mature than me. Uh oh, I was all right until just now. Um, far more mature than me, and I've really seen it, done it, and bought the t shirt far more than I have. I'm getting alongside me and just going, look, come on, let me challenge you, let me provoke you, let me, let me push you forward which has been amazing. Um, And actually, one of the people that's done that, and I will mention this now, one of the people that did that was Ian Eardley, who you may have heard went to be with Jesus this week quite suddenly. He'd been ill for a long time, but quite suddenly, Ian this week went to be with Jesus, which I'm sure Andy will pick up later before we finish. But Ian was one of the people who were like, I'd I'd preach and I'd leave here at midday and get home and almost without exception, I'd get home to a really lengthy email from Ian, point by point review of everything that I'd said. And he was always so encouraging and so challenging as well, provoking, saying, next time, go further with this. Next time, do this. And and, when when I heard the other day that he'd gone to be with the Lord, you know, obviously there's a big part of me 
obviously there's a big part of me that's rejoicing and saying actually the, the short time that we've had singing this morning, Ian doesn't have any more short times of being with God. That's it now. And he's gone to be with, with, with the Lord forever. And then obviously naturally, humanly, it's a bit of me going, oh man, I can't believe I'm not going to get any of those emails from Ian again next time I speak. And it's sad. But Ian's, Ian's gone to be with God. So, just to wrap up, over the next five minutes, or just uh, what the reason I said that is that I do want to say some things now to land the spiritual gift passage. Um, and probably some of this might be a little bit challenging and provoking. And I guess I'm preface it by saying it's, it's meant to be. Um, first thing is, and, and I. Um, I like studying things. I like, I like getting into stuff and really figuring out what I think of it. And when I hear things that other people are studying, I like studying as well, just to, you know, see, see what they're studying. And um, if, you're, if you're into the New Apostolic Reformation teaching, if you could stick the next thing up, Caleb, okay, thanks. Be wise and discerning if you're studying the NAR teachers. So there's a new breed of, um, relatively new, breed of apostles and prophets Um, and I've kind of been studying it because I know a lot of other people are and over the past few months I've been studying the New Apostolic Reformation and some of that teaching and and just trying to get my head around it and 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 figure it out and there's some really good stuff there as there is with everything you know there's good in in a lot of teaching Um, I guess my my request is be wise and discerning when you're studying the NAR teachers because some of it is really good and then some of it I kind of hear and think that that's not what that passage of Revelation actually means and you're going a long way down, this is what it means and it doesn't and misrepresenting and misteaching some of the things from Acts. So there's parts of it that are really good but there's parts of it which are quite easy to actually say that's just not biblical. So just, just be wise. I'm, I'm not on any level saying, and you know, I can't say on any level, you shouldn't do that. I mean, there are teachers where you just go, false teacher, don't listen to them. Um, but there's a lot of good stuff in the New Apostolic Reformation teaching. But be wise, because there's some mistaught and misrepresented um, theology in there as well. Now, next thing, just as I land. If the Holy Spirit gives you a word of knowledge, today, now, four minutes time, five minutes time, if the Holy Spirit gives you a word of knowledge, and we saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, to another, word of knowledge, which is great, because that will happen in a few minutes time. Um, ask, ask him who it's for. Actually, Terry Belsey, um, came to give me a prophetic word eight months or so ago, I think. And at the time, Terry sat down next to me and said, I think God's saying this to you. And then she said, I don't know if that means anything. And it's one of those things where at the time you're sitting there going, it doesn't really mean anything. I don't really want to tell you it doesn't mean anything because you've been obedient and come to talk to me and say, I think I've got this prophetic word, but okay, I'll I'll just say yes and take it and, and process. And at the time when Terry spoke to me, it meant nothing to me other than Terry had said, I really, really feel God saying this and this to you. And um, within two hours, literally within two hours of leaving here and getting home, the first part of what she said happened. And it was a challenge. There were two challenging things, basically. Um, Within two hours, the first thing had happened. And then three weeks later, the second thing happened. And I remember... I remember lying in in an ambulance at the time thinking, this is the second part of the thing that Terry prophesied. Okay, then God told me about this three weeks ago. And praise God, thank you, that you told me this was going to be a challenge three weeks ago and it meant nothing to me at the time. And now, here I am in an ambulance and it's the thing that I'm hanging on to because you said it to me and I'm hanging on to it now, God, because you said it to me and it was true. And the reason I've said... 
ask the Holy Spirit who it's for if he gives you a word of knowledge, is I think if Terry had, if Terry had come forward and said, someone here, there's a thing that the Holy Spirit says to someone, probably that morning, probably it would have just gone, it would have passed me by, probably. Um, but because when the Holy Spirit said to Terry, go and talk to Martin and tell him this, just like the Holy Spirit says to Agabus, talk to Paul and tell him this, for me, then when I had to, I could hang on to it and say, well, the Holy Spirit said this to me. So, and I'm not in any way saying don't bring words where, because a few weeks ago, Laurentia brought a word that said someone here, and it was a pretty weighty, weighty word of knowledge. I'm not saying don't bring those, but what I am saying in the name of, being, of us growing into maturity is, okay, if in five minutes' time the Holy Spirit says to you, here's a prophetic word for someone, then take the next step and say, who's it for? Tell me, send me, send me to that person now, and I'll go and tell them. Because it might be, like it was for me with Terry's word, when I was in an ambulance going, thank you God that you said this to me three weeks ago. <laughs> because this is the thing that means I can still hang on to it. Also, two minutes and we're done and we'll get the kids. Don't forget wisdom is a spiritual gift. And I think sometimes, um, I think because Paul obviously in 1 Corinthians sort of singles out prophecy and tongues, often we can pass all the other spiritual gifts by quite easily. So, you know, this list here that I've already read out. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge, to another faith, to another gifts of healing, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between, between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. It's a whole load of amazing gifts available from the Holy Spirit to us and you know, like I was saying earlier, the wisdom imparted to me from people wiser than me has been invaluable in the past year in my life. So actually, you know, let's not bypass the fact that actually God may or may not choose to gift you with prophecy or with tongues or with healing. It's up to him. The Holy Spirit gives as he wills, as it says here, to each one individually as he wills for the common good. And if it turns out, actually, God doesn't gift me prophetically, but does gift Colin, the Brighton fan, prophetically, fantastic. Because that will be a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, for my good and for Colin's good and for all of our goods. Actually, probably for me, I should probably be saying to God, God, gift me with wisdom, actually. If you, you know, if you... Uh, and, this is going to be a shaky theological sentence, but God, if you're going to gift me a gift, probably the most useful one for the common good for me is probably wisdom. Because actually, as an elder, I need to be becoming more wise than I have been so far um, in my 371 days. Um, ask God to bring revelation to you about who he is and what he's doing. And this is... Um, my reflection of the 21st century church at large around the world from just stuff that I study and stuff that I listen to and read and so on. I guess my, my, my reflection would be um, potentially the church at large spends a lot of time consumed with who we are and what God thinks of us and probably not as much time as we should thinking about who he is and what we think of him. And I think one of the things that I was reflecting on this week is I remember 20 or so years ago, um, often actually in, 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 in meetings in this church, with this church, I'd hear people, when I was a young Christian, I'd hear people speak in the first person what God was saying about himself. And there would be contributions which were, I this, I that, I, 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 spoken directly through someone on behalf of God. And there would be a lot of times where I would, as Paul goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 12, actually, 
and I was a, a new believer then. I know it kind of talks about be- believers and unbelievers and so on. But I was a relatively new believer back in those days. And I would often hear, wow, I've heard God speaking about himself. And it's cut me to the heart with who he is and therefore who I am. And therefore I can see the mercy of God towards me because I've just learned something about him. And it isn't all about who am I and what does God think of me? It's who is he? What do I think of him? Wow, and he thinks this of me? And I think I would love to hear personally in this place, in this gathering, I'd love to hear more first person God speaking through someone about himself and who he is and what he's done and what he's doing. And as a byproduct of that, wow, and I'm part of that. That's amazing. So I guess I would challenge the prophets amongst us, lovingly challenge for the common good, for the manifestation of the spirit, for the common good. God, what you saying about who you are? Let me talk to people about who you are. Let's build the church up with glorifying you because of who you are. And also don't forget, finally, don't forget 1 Corinthians 13 follows 1 Corinthians 12. Let me just read this to close. Ollie and Gideon are the band. Do you guys want to come back up? Thanks. So spiritual gifts are an amazing thing given by the Spirit for us. But don't forget in the very next chapter, which wasn't a chapter when it was written, it was just the next part of the letter. It, you know, it wasn't split into chapters until a few centuries AD. Um, 1 Corinthians 13 If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I'm nothing. If I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I've been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Let's stand together, shall we? What we're gonna do is worship God, sing a song, sing another song. While we're singing this song, if, if you want to go and get your kids from Kids Work next door and bring them back through, because we're gonna pray at the end of this song for the Holy Spirit to release gifts and, and expect that he will do that because he said he would do that. Um, so if you wanna get your kids now, get them and bring them back, please. But Ollie and the band are gonna lift our eyes up to worship Jesus now. So rather than going straight in with, okay, gift me, God, let's not forget, he's, he gives gifts so that we can glorify him. So let's start by glorifying him.